Okay, so in this section we're looking at inverse functions. And these can be kind of challenging. So uh, let's take some time here, press pause as often as you feel you need, and uh, hopefully at the end of this video you'll have a little bit better idea of what it means to find the inverse function. So I find it helpful to think of a function like a machine. And in order to do that, you have to be very clear on the order of operations. So let's look at this function f of x. And what we do is we think about x coming into a machine. And that machine is called f. Now what's the first thing that happens? Okay, think about your order of operations. First thing that happens is minus 2 gets subtracted. The next thing that happens is x minus 2 gets squared. And then what happens? We multiply by 3 and finally we subtract 5 and that gives us f of x. Alright, so that should make, make it um, reasonable. The order of operations is really important. So now let's talk about the inverse of f. And we write it like this. And even though you might think that means 1 over f, in this case it doesn't. We read this as the inverse of f. And we want to figure out, given uh, this as a function of f, what does the inverse do? And the inverse just undoes whatever f did. And so what I think about it is like this. Here's x, and it's coming into this function, and this is going to be the inverse function. Now it's going to undo everything that f did. And the way that happens is instead of going in this order, we go in this order, and we use the opposite of each of these operations. So if you think about that, the very last thing is subtract 5. So the very first thing in the inverse is going to be add 5. The next thing going right to left is you multiply by 3. And so instead of doing that, we're going to divide by 3. The next one is raised to the second power. Well, the opposite of that is square root, and then the very last thing we get at going right to left is subtract 2, and the opposite of that is add 2. So this is f inverse of x. And if I think about this as a function, what do I do? Well, the first thing that happens is I added 5. So that means x plus 5. And then I divide it by 3. And there we go. And then I take the square root. And finally, I add 2. And that is the inverse of f. What that means is that if I go f of f inverse of x, I'm going to get x. And also, f inverse of f of x will give me x. I suggest that you press pause and knowing what you know about how to compo com uh, compose the composition of two functions, check to see that both of these things work. Now another way to find the inverse is to simply switch x and y and then solve for y. So let's look again at our example. We had f of x is equal to 3 times x minus 2 squared minus 5. And f of x, remember, is the same as y. And so if I switch, let's just make sure we know what we're doing, switch x and y, what we get is x is equal to 3 times y minus 2 squared minus 5. And I want to solve that for y. So the first thing I'm going to do is add 5 to both sides. Right? Can you see this? And then I'm going to divide by 3. 
So let's stop there, and that's going to give me this. Okay, so as I solve for y, the next thing I'm going to do is take the square root of both sides. So that looks like this. And that gives me y minus 2. And then if I add 2 to both sides, I get y. And that is another way to find the inverse of f. And I trust that you can see that it's exactly the same as what we got before. So that's how you find the inverse of a function. Okay, so let's, uh, let's finish up by this example. We want to find the inverse of this function right here. So we'll do it two ways. First we'll talk about how we create f. So if you think about what happens with f, the first thing that happens, this is a little trickier, is we subtract 3 from x, and then we put it in the bottom, which means we raise it to the minus 1 power, and then we multiply by minus 3. So that's how f is created. So if we want f inverse, well, f inverse is going to undo everything. So x is going to come in, and f inverse is going to undo. So remember what that means. We start from the right, and we go backwards, and we look at the upper the opposite of each of those, or the inverse of each of those operations. So the first one is, instead of multiplying by minus 3, we're going to divide by minus 3. Now, the opposite of raising to the minus 1 is actually raising to the minus 1, and that one takes a little bit of thought. And then instead of subtracting 3, we add 3. And that's what f inverse of x is. So now we have to write it. f inverse of x is equal to x divided by minus 3, all raised to the minus 1, and then plus 3. Well, something raised to the minus 1 is 1 over that, and a fraction is just going to be minus 3 over x plus 3, and now what we want to do is get a common denominator. The common denominator is x and x. So therefore, f inverse of x can best be written as 3x minus 3 all over x. Okay, so again, I ask you to try yourself and show that f of f inverse of x is equal to x. And also, f inverse of f of x gives us x. All right, now let's try it the other way. So we're going to find the inverse of f of x, or y is equal to minus 3 over x minus 3 by switching x and y. So if I do that, here's what I have. x is equal to minus 3 over y minus 3. So what I want to do here is multiply both sides by y minus 3. And that gives me this. Now I multiply out xy minus 3x equals minus 3. Now remember I'm trying to solve for y so I want to get y all by itself. So xy I'm going to going to add 3x to both sides. <coughs> Excuse me. So I get xy equals 3x minus 3, and now divide by x, and I get y is equal to 3x minus 3 over x. And that is the inverse of f. Same as before. Okay, so those are the techniques of finding the inverse of a function. Alrighty, that's it for now.